All right, so the second part of this jam is about um, it's a little bit about geometry on bikes, and um, uh, it was, Pathless Pedal just put up a video about chain stay length the other day, which I thought was um, it's not often that Russ and I are in reasonable agreement about stuff. We have different opinions, which is not to say um, how to how to say. It's not to say that I disagree with his opinions, I just have different ones, um, because his use cases are different than mine, and that makes entirely uh, reasonable sense. So, uh, but in this case, um, he was talking about chain stay length and how he tends to like shorter chain stays and all the rest. Uh, me too, Russ, me too. And um, my love for short chain stays is uh, harsher than his in that I don't do long multi day. I don't tour. I don't do long multi day stuff. Um, I don't do, um, yeah, I tend to do, uh, I tend to do single day rides. I tend to do unloaded stuff and I tend to do highly technical stuff. And even when I don't, I prefer bikes that feel as lively as possible underneath me up to and including, um, them feeling damn near twitchy. I just, I enjoy things that I need to keep my eye on. So, um, as I've as I've been working to design my next mountain bike, I've been trying to sort of factor in, um, you know, 27 years worth of mountain biking uh, experience and thoughts and preferences and all that into a reasonably moderated new version of a bike for me. I don't want to take things, I, this is a tendency for me to always want to take things out to the very end of their natural progression, um, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hold back from that. I'm trying to end up with something a little bit less extreme and um, edge case. Anyway, currently I'm looking at something uh, uh, roughly speaking like this, and that is a 400 millimeter chain stay with a 27 and a half inch wheel and clearance for a three inch tire. Now I know that that right there is a tire touching a seat tube and that that's no bueno. Things won't go roundy round if it's like that. There are ways of mitigating this here issue right here. Um, and practically speaking, uh, I've been reliably informed that without going to extraordinary lengths, um, or giving up tire clearance or making other compromises, you can do about 400 millimeters with a 27.5 30 tire um, on a mountain bike. And uh, I can't decide if I want the minimum to be 400 or 405, and I realize five millimeters is like this much, and who cares? But um, I have uh, some slightly, not unique, but unusual experience in that I am um, I'm actually someone who has ridden extensively on mountain bikes with sub 400 millimeter chainstays, and most people cannot say that. Um, uh, regular mountain bike chainstays these days, especially on, on bigger wheeled bikes, are like 435 millimeters or so. And even back in the day on 26s, um, you were out over 400. You were, you know, 420, 425, 430. Um, uh, but my current mountain bike is at 412 uh, with 26 inch wheels um, and I've ridden 415s on 27 and a half by 2.8s uh, and those did not feel super duper short for me. So I'm looking to I'm looking to scooch down below that and you're thinking to yourself what about stability Tim and what about smoothness and what about uh, um, you know climbing and looping out and all that sort of stuff. Well, let me explain um, where I live and the trails that I ride, um, I don't have multi-mile long fire road climbs up followed by multi-mile long single track descents down. That's, that doesn't exist here. Um, in fact, every bit of elevation change that I have is very steep and very short. Um, and so it's a matter of uh, being able technically to get up the thing and not so much about um, optimizing pedaling position for efficiency up it. So all those super steep seat tube angles uh, that you're starting to see crop up in bikes. One, which I think are fallacy mostly on hardtails, but um, they don't really apply to me and what I do here. And the bike that I'm building is for here. This is not an all-arounder. This is not a bike that I'm going to take out to the West Coast or California or whatever uh, to go ride those trails. This is, a, this is a bike for here and for the trails that I ride. Um, so... 
super short chain stays are, are going to help with technical steep ups. Um, and not just in short hills, but in ledges. Uh, we have a lot of square edge stuff here. Um, and so the ability to sort of like hop a bike up something um, is important sometimes. And uh, short chain stays will help me with that, which I'm excited about. Um, they also help if you um, are dropping off stuff rear wheel first. So uh, I'm excited to have those here for this. And uh, I don't hit high enough speeds to worry about the stability of that much in the first place. Um, I used to go chairlifting on a hardtail with short chain stays. Uh, and it the 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 lack of stability there didn't really bother me. Again, the stuff I tend towards finding amusing is fairly tight and twisty anyway. So a bike that wants to change directions rapidly has always seemed a benefit to me. And this is reflected in um, most of the other bikes that I, I really enjoy riding. My road bike has I think 400 millimeter chain stays as well, um, and on 700 C tires. Um, so it's got a fairly short back end as well. It might be sub 400. I'd have to go measure. Um, but yeah, I tend to like the rear wheel tucked up underneath me. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, anyway, it was interesting to see uh, Russ talk about that stuff uh, right around the same time that I'm working through a bunch of design choices and a bunch of um, ideas about my next bike that incorporate some of that. So it was good to see. Anyway, uh, there you have it. The The condition of a vintage gravel bike and the challenges of upkeep, uh, as well as um, uh, some hacks for your mountain bike and some geometry talk. So yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to leave it there for now. And then we'll, um, we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching.